Just a quick forward. Uh, this video will be split into three sections. Uh, we'll have the grow. We'll have a discussion about the light itself. And we'll have a PAR test uh, measuring the photosynthetically active radiation uh, emitted from these lights at the end of the video. I'll leave timestamps below me now so you can skip ahead if you only want to watch part of the video. Enjoy. Welcome back to Who Chose uh, with special guests. Floki and Ragnar. Today on Who Chose, uh, I'll be unboxing this. This is a Spider Farmer SF2000. As you know, I'm not a fan of unboxing. The cat's gone. <laughs> All right, so in the box, a light. Whoa, that is cool. I did not expect that. Okay, so it looks like they've added a dimmer to the lights. That is awesome. <laughs> Have a go at that. I love it. That's a really nice light. So we've got the light itself. We've got hangers. This looks like an ethernet cable. This RJ45 port here means that you can connect all of the lights in a series um, and dim them all with the same controller so that they're all exact same brightness. They're learning. <laughs> Spider Farmer actually sent me this light uh, so that I could grow some plants and make some videos. Thank you, Spider Farmer. Links in the description, and I'll be doing a PAR test on it towards the end of the video. So we'll discuss this light more in a second. Uh, but because I really don't want to do any reviews on lights that I haven't used myself, I'm actually going to go ahead and grow some plants with it. Uh, it might be a bit jarring because my facial hair may have changed by the time we get to discuss this light, but... I'll be able to discuss it in more depth and with a better understanding myself, having used it. So let's grow some plants. So I'll be planting a couple of uh, watermelons in these pots. I don't know why I'm watermelons. Uh, I just want to grow watermelons. Now, so cocoa, perlite, vermiculite, perlite, both in 50-50 concentrations. And I'll have to top feed for uh, the first while the roots are finding their way down uh, to the bottom. All right, let's test this light out. Hmm. I figured out the dimmer. <laughs> so the dimmer is um, interesting. So if you have this one switched on, that switches the dimmer side of the light on. If you switch this side on, it's just full on. So there's no dimming on this side. Um, so there's two on switches and you have to choose the right one um, in order for the function that you want. So full on at this distance gives me a par reading of 864, um, which is not right for seedlings. Uh, that's, that's like full flower numbers. So, and that's a good, that's a foot almost. It's above, that's more than a foot. Uh, so I'm just going to turn it on to the dimmer mode and we can dial that right back to the appropriate seedling par. So rather than waste energy, I can just lower the light until 
I get it, you know, a decent distance. And then I can just dial it back to about 300. And that'll keep the seedlings happy. So I've added my nutrient solution into uh, my reservoir. And I'm just going to go ahead and turn on the pump. That should fill up the reservoir to about here, which will allow the pots to wick up and into the growing media. I'm also going to top feed just to start with um, so that the roots have you know enough time to make their way down into the rest of the media. with the way the light performed. It was really easy to adjust the brightness uh, of the light throughout the grow uh, to tailor it to the plant's stages of growth and the plant started flowering. Now, to do with the medium, uh, I actually used a coarser vermiculite and perlite for the original plant on the right-hand side, uh, which wasn't fine enough to wick up from uh, the flooding and draining and stunted the growth of the other plant. So I just moved to the single plant uh, for that grow. Now let's discuss the lights. So there are essentially four things that you're looking for when purchasing an LED grow light. The first thing is the actual components used in the build of the light. Uh, without decent quality components, uh, you won't be able to uh, translate the watt draw into photosynthetically active radiation that the plant can use. Number two is actual watt draw. So uh, there's no way that a manufacturer can break the laws of thermodynamics and get more light than the actual wattage drawn from the wall will allow. So if you've got a low watt light, uh, it's probably not gonna have a high output. Number three is efficacy. Now this is just the efficiency with which the light uh, translates that uh, watt draw into photosynthetically active radiation. Now, uh, a lot of manufacturers will give their efficacy, but most people will rely on third parties to do the testing because, you know, it's um, it's a pretty shady world, the LED light industry. So do your research when looking at efficacy and uh, knowing about the different types of LED diodes um, and the drivers and the outputs that... Uh, different spectrums of LEDs have is very useful to take into consideration when purchasing an LED grow light. And the fourth thing you need to take into consideration that I actually can't give any advice on is your actual personal requirements. For instance, if you're interested in raising seedlings, you probably would only need uh, an SF1000 or even maybe a smaller light because your requirements aren't that of those who are trying to grow 
cash crops that require large amounts of PPFD uh, and photosynthetically active radiation uh, to bring to full maturity and flower and get the maximum yield possible. If you are one of those cash croppers, you are gonna wanna light up the sky of your tent with LED lights. And that's where these larger LED light fixtures come into play. So let's have a look at the components of the Spider Farmer SF2000. Uh, the heat sink itself is a two millimeter thick anodized aluminium heat sink, two PCBs um, connected to a Meanwell driver, uh, which powers the LED diodes. It also has a dimmable toggle to allow you to save power um, in the early stages of growth or just to limit the amount of photosynthetically active radiation that some of your crops are getting. The diodes themselves exist in four different states. They are 6 to 6.5K, 3 to 3.2K, 660 to 665 far red diodes, and scattered throughout the board is a 760 infrared diode to give it that extra red shift in the spectrum. The light itself is a full spectrum light, the benefit of full spectrum lighting, apart from the fact that it gives the plants a good spread of uh, photosynthetically active radiation, is that it makes it really easy to work with the plants in a more natural setting. Uh, you can identify deficiencies and plant health in general a lot easier when the spectrum is pretty much white. Uh, and you have full visual of the plant when the lights are on. So in the design of this light, it is completely noiseless. Uh, the heat sink is passive, which means that there is no active cooling happening, but the anodized aluminum helps to cool the light in the same way that uh, other anodized aluminum products uh, passively cool their components. The PCBs themselves have a thin layer of uh, waterproofing on and over the diodes, uh, which is fantastic for those who foliar feed their plants. And uh, it will extend the life of the LEDs uh, to make sure that there's no uh, water or salt buildup on those diodes. Let's go ahead and make a PPFD map of the output of this light and test its efficacy. Okay, so to take the measurements today, I'll be using an Apogee Instruments MQ500, which is the latest uh, generation of PAR sensors. I'll be taking measurements over a one by 1.2 square meter area with no reflection. So just remember that if you have reflective walls to your growing area, you will be able to achieve higher PPFD at the edges of your grow area. So this is set at one foot or 12 inches and I've added on uh, the height of the par reader. All right, now we've got our PPFD maps. Uh, so the average for the PPFD of the 12 inch height was 370. We then times that by the area, which is 1.2 square meters to arrive at 444. We then divide that by 201, which is the watt draw at the wall. And we come to uh, PPFD per watt uh, e efficacy of 2.2 micromoles per joule. That's a really good efficacy. 
Now that is at 12 inches height. We can do the same for the 18 inches height. So we average the PPFD map to 287. Then we times that by 1.2, which is the area of the measurement. And we get a efficacy of 1.7. Now that is taking into account the inverse square law, obviously. Um, and there is no reflective uh, walls around the area that I'm measuring. So you will gain some of that back if you were to hang it higher within a reflective grow room. But 2.2 is a fantastic efficacy, um, especially for a light of this price. And it's not really surprising given all of the components that have gone into the light, like the driver and the uh, Samsung 301B LEDs. But it's good to see that it's still putting out that um, high efficacy. And there you have it. The Spider Farmer SF2000 Grow Light. Now, I actually think that their recommendation for fruiting and flowering is dead on perfect. Uh, a two by four grow area underneath these lights. So in your average grow room, if you wanted to fill your grow room, which is a 1.2 by 1.2 or a four by four, you're probably gonna want two of these things in the sky above your plants. If you're just doing seedlings and things like that, um, these lights on their own are really good because you can have a row of propagators or a longer propagator underneath it. And I've actually found that this form factor is um, a lot easier to use uh, than these ones because you're only dealing with one set of hangers, one power cord. Now, I'm pretty sure that the newer versions of these Spider Pharma SF1000s are dimmable, but I've really enjoyed the ability to dim it so that I can adapt it to the stage and life cycle of my plant and not waste power. Now, being wary as you should be of anyone that's incentivized to recommend products, I was incentivized to do this video by this light being given to me for free. However, I've already made the decision that this was the best light for me three times before. Um, these are basically the same light. Uh, it's just that this is the bigger brother uh, with twice the amount of PCB and driver power, etc. So this light was the right light for me before I was incentivized. Take what you will from that, but I'm a big fan of the Spider Farmer lights and I'm happy to give them a recommendation from my own behalf. Thanks for watching guys. If you like the video, hit like, subscribe, head over to our Patreon, support the channel, and I've got merch. So if you wanna grab some cool merch, just head under the video, there should be samples, and there's two different stores in the description that you can buy them from. Uh, one will have uh, cheaper postage for your location. Happy hydroponicking.